the new inverter been up and running now for about five days i turn it on on sunday morning around 3 a.m and it is a cloudy day 560 something watt is coming in and it's still charging the battery and the house is only using 212 watt this inverter is really easy to set up although the bracket gives you plenty of space for a circulation behind it i put an extra piece of cement board to give it a little more space this inverter is a lot quieter compared to my old one and I'm not sure if this is gonna come up in the video when I used to record while those were on there would be a high pitch so I'm gonna see if this does the same thing I don't think it's gonna do it those are two at battery wire I got two for the positive and two for the negative and they fit down and they go to the new battery bus bar those are a lot nicer than the previous one and i have a lot more room for expansion the only thing i'm using on here is the load output i might use the smart load in the future for something like a electric hot water heater i am not connected to the grid and i don't have a generator connection I am using a 6AWG THHN wire for my load connection that is sufficient for a 50 amp breaker. If you are using grid connection, you are required to use a 3AWG wire. This is why I am not using it over there. If you are using grid connection, you are required to use a 3AWG wire. I am using the white wire because i got a really good deal on it i just put tape around it to mark the wire i got it at lowe's for 21 cents per foot i only have communication between those three server rack battery all the other battery don't have communication connect to them this pv wire will be inside of a three quarter inch pvc conduit and those are 10 AWG THWN that go all the way to the outside shed. This PV wire used to come to this disconnect switch and go to this inverter and that inverter. I'm gonna take those inverter down. I might keep one to make a portable unit. The other one, I'm gonna sell it to a family, family member that's interested in building a system. Those terminal adapter, I think they are really nice to use with this 12,000 XP or in any other case. The only thing is I had to cut an extra piece to make it super tight so it doesn't move. If you don't do that, you might have a gap. And this PVC conduit go all the way over here. I left an opening right here because the plan is when I take those down, there will be another AG4 12,000 XP right here that would make a combine of 100 amp that is the same service I have for the house and this conduit go behind those DIY battery and it come up here it come to my off grid slash sub panel it come to this 50 amp breaker right here I also mark them with tape And from there, I got those three 30 amp breaker that feed to those three transfer switch. I have to replace this electrical panel at some point because it looked kind of old and it started to rust. I got those grow out battery as defective. I thought I would have to replace the BMS, but I think the voltage was too low. That's why it wasn't working. They've been working perfectly. I haven't had any issue with them. 
and those are the very first battery that I got when I started this solar journey. It's gonna be cloudy for the next couple of days. I will try to show a footage of what it looks like outside, but 600 watt is still coming in and the battery is still charging and the house is not really using anything right now. This inverter is really easy to set up. Now I just have to make the time to take those down and install the new one. Thank you for coming to my channel. I hope you enjoy. See you in the next video. One thing I think this inverter will never use in my case is the orange color because the orange color come in when you're using the grid connection and the green is on when you're using solar and battery power and it turn red when your battery are low.